Hey guys, welcome to our channel. So we've been decoding Pinball Wizard, guys, by The Who. And we've taken our extractions. I'm trying to get through this fairly quickly because we've got a lot to get through, all right? Um, um, and there was a little reading I should have done last time, and I didn't do it, so now we're doing it. Um, so you got playing, change to plays, and he plays change to plays and he ain't changed to ain't so playing change to plays and he fell off twice so if you cross off uh, p l a y and p l a y because they're alike you're left with i n g and s and we brought i n g s down now i write these in caps for myself to make it easier but i'm binary coding them out in uh, lowercase because they should actually all be lowercase um and you know what? A quantum computer might uh, might code them out both ways. So maybe we should be decoding them out both ways. But right now, we're going to be good with uh, lowercase. And if I have to backtrack, I will. So, um, and he fell off twice. So uh, he we simply brought he down twice. All right. Now, um, we, got our num we got our letters to go through all the categories. We got our... Uh, numerological numbers to go through all the categories. We've got our binary, our binary code to go through all the categories, the one we stumbled on. Simple binary code, I suppose we should call it. And uh, we got uh, now, oh, we got numerology to go, numbers to go through uh, atomic numbers too, by the way, and uh, got some uh, periodic table of elements stuff, right? And now we're on regular binary. And we've got that to go through finance. We've got it to go through genetics, which was really interesting. We've got it to go through uh, medical. We've got it to go through uh, chemical and technology and uh, uh, now we're on research groups, right? Gets confusing as you go. And uh, this one was a little interesting, guys. So um, I went ahead and started because uh, the last couple I was able to do two letters at once and then one letter and then two letters, right? Or the last one, anyway. Seems like couple. Because <laughs> uh, I had to, I had such a hard time with that one, but um, for some reason. <laughs> but uh, IN is 01101001011011. And ran against research groups. Well, I ran it against research group. And I started doing that, guys, instead of putting the S on groups. Because uh, I was getting, uh, you know, 923 research groups when I was running my numbers. So I just started running research group singular. And it brings me up, you know, multiple research groups that way. And it eliminates um, a certain number of research groups, which I really don't uh, want, I don't think. So, um, that said, um, against research group, you get Department of Computer Science at UCI again, and since they kept coming up, I decided to read about them, and I'm glad I did. They deal with uh, parallel computing. So, uh, bear with me. Uh, UCI Department of Computer Science, Distinguished Lecture Series. When May WHWU is your professor? And abstract. Since early 2000, we have been exploring new, very important developments in computing. One is that a tremendous amount of resources have been invested into innovative applications such as first principle based models, deep learning, and cognitive computing. Uh, many application domains are questioning the conventional it is too expensive thinking that led to inaccuracies and missed opportunities. The other part is that the industry has been taking a technological path where application performance and power efficiency vary by more than two orders of magnitude depending on their parallelism. Hetero, uh, heterogeneity and locality. Uh, today, most of the top supercomputers in the world are heterogeneous and parallel computing systems. New standards such as heterogeneous systems 
Architecture, HSA, are emerging to facilitate software development. Much, is, much has been and needs to be learned about algorithms, languages, compliers, and hardware architecture in these movements. Uh, what are the applications that continue to drive technological Technology development, how hard is it to program these systems today? How hard will programming these systems be in the future? How will innovations in memory and storage devices present further opportunities and challenges? What is the impact of long-term software engineering cost on applications? In this talk, I will present some research opportunities and challenges that are brought about by this perfect store. All right, then it goes to bio. This is where it gets a little interesting. Uh, when me, WHWU, is a professor that holds the Saunders AMD Endowed Chair in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, uh, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, his research interests are in the area of architecture, implementation, compilation, and algorithms for parallel computing. He is the chief scientist of Parallel Computing Institute and director of the Impact Research Group. Uh, he is co-founder at CTO of MultiCoreWare and CTO of MultiCoreWare, excuse me. So, um, and it goes on, guys, but uh, right now, the real question is, what's parallel computing, right? Well, I'm going to provide these links, by the way, guys, in the description. So, uh, in the simplest sense, parallel computing is the simultaneous use of multiple compute resources to solve a computational problem. A problem is broken into discrete parts that can be solved concurrently. Each part is further broken down into a series of instructions. Instructions from each part execute simultaneously on different processors. An overall control coordination mechanism is employed. All right. Uh, the computational problem should be able, or should be able to be broken apart into discrete pieces of work that can be solved simultaneously, execute multiple program instructions at any moment in time, be solved in less time with multiple compute resources than with a single compute resource. The compute resources are typically typically a single computer with multi with a multiple processors cores, an arbitrary number of such computers connected by a network. And then it talks about parallel computers. Virtually all standalone computers today are parallel from a hardware perspective. From a hardware perspective there. All right. And that goes on. But uh, that's parallel computing. All right. And... <laughs> so that, get, that, that, that was still just IN, guys. Um, you had a few other things there, which I will provide. Uh, I will back that up and provide the actual search. Um, excuse me one second. Um, I, you, I've been doing this more, but we're going to pause this one second. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so that was IN. And uh, so then I had to search G by itself. And G is 01100111. And you got Kastner Research Group, among a few other things. And I'll provide the, the search, but the, the um, Kastner Research Group is what. And, and you got to watch these numbers get crossed off. Um, numbers missing, numbers missing. Um, but then here's my number, and here is Kastner Research Group. You also have research and publications, arts and humanities, Babson College. And your number's there. You have Research Horizons Magazine. 
uh, design-based research, academic publications, and citations. And so I'll provide the searches, and they go on, but uh, Kastner Research Group. Um, <coughs> Um, so then, um, you, then we were able to take SH, um, and SH is zero one 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 zero zero one one zero one one zero one zero zero zero, and uh, that's uh, that's G. Excuse me, one second. I will have to pause this one more time. Sorry about that, guys. So that uh, we're at SH now, and I just did the, I just read you the long number, and you got Robert W. Gell uh, research. All right. Now we looked him up later because he keeps coming up. I um, mean, he came up before. Um, you also got um, going dark going forward. Uh, House Committee on the Department of Homeland Security that we keep getting. Um. Going to House Committee on Homeland Security uh, research. So they come up, um, which they keep coming up. Uh, you got Lecture 14. You got a study group there. But uh, that that uh, Robert W. Gale, G E H L, and Homeland Security. Um, so then we go to E, which is 01100101. You got Robert W. Gell again. You also get social science is research papers. Um, you also get, oh no, my number's not there, but my number. No. Forget social sciences research papers. Um, the number's not there. I did not notice that before, but I noticed it now. Lucky me. So uh, Robert W. Gell, guys, um, and he uh, does research, so uh, he keeps coming up. So we're going to find out who he is shortly. Um, so then um, you've got, uh, and I'll provide the search link, guys. There, there is more here. You got Reed Publication, University of can Barra. so you got that too um so you got he which is zero one one zero one zero 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 one one zero zero one zero one and that's he and you get robert w gell again you also get nipun chopra phd and he does uh research as well Maybe I should make sure the number's there. The number is most certainly there. So, um, yeah, I just missed that one uh, thing. That the number wasn't there, guys. But uh, then um, you go to H, uh, which is, uh, and there's more there. Of, uh, server retires, pizza party ensues. That is in Citrix Research. So you hit it by that. You hit another research group. Uh, but then you got H, which is 01101000. And I put case. Yeah, case studies research papers, academia.edu. You have that. Um, you also have Research Horizons Magazine at Georgia Tech. Um, you also have Research and Compute. Computational molecular biology. Ooh, computational molecular biology, huh? We will have to read about that at some point. Um, maybe I'll look it up at the end of this video. Computational molecular biology. Haven't seen that. Do you remember seeing that one? Computational molecular biology? Yeah. No, sir. All right. No. Well, we haven't seen that one yet, so we'll look it up, even if it runs it a little long, guys, because uh, that's probably worth looking up. Um, and there's the number. <sighs> Computational molecular biology, huh? 
Yeah, we're just going to write that down. Molecular biology. Yeah, we're going to have to look at that and see what that is. But uh, and that actually, uh, and I should write that that is, uh, that is, H. All right. So that's H. All right. We're going to have to look into that, guys. I almost lost my place. So then coming back, uh, HS didn't do anything. So we took S, which is 01110011. We got Civil Military Cybersecurity Research Team. Civil Military Cybersecurity Research Team. You also get Robert W. Gell again. All right, and then uh, we, and there's more, a little more, but and we'll provide the links, guys. Um, you also get Research Horizon magazines, Horizons magazine again. Um, so then uh, you have NI. We're gonna move on from that. And NI, you have uh, zero one one zero one 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 zero zero one one. 01001. You get Robert W. Gell again. You get the Department of Computer Science at UCI again, among a few other things. All right. Then N, um, you got 01101110, and you got that uh, Homeland Security thing again, going dark or uh, uh, going. Silent, going dark, going dark, going forward. That's what it is. Going dark, going forward. Uh, the Homeland Security. Um, yeah, um, you also get case study research papers, and I believe the number's there this time. You also get marketing research, and you also get evolution of marijuana medicalization again. We got that before. We got it all through uh, medical, I think. We got it in uh, chemical as well. And now we got it in research groups. All right. Um, then you have I, which is 01101001. You get civil military cybersecurity research team again. You get marketing research again. You get the homeland security thing again. And you get evolution of med marijuana medicalization again. And that gets you through going forwards and backwards. And now we're going to see if we can find out. Computational molecular biology. Computational molecular biology. What is that? Tell me we're not on. We are not on. We are on MIT. Okay. Computational molecular biology brings together computational, statistical, experimental, and technological methods in order to further scientific discovery and develop new analytical tools for molecular biology. All right. Computational biology. I'll provide that link as well. You can read all about that. And I'm sorry for running into it for 18 minutes, but there were a couple things to get through there, and it was kind of a long one anyway. And uh, that's the end of research groups. Um, so then I will hit uh, I will hit random hits. And then we will move on <laughs> to the Bible decode, and then we'll get through that as quickly as we can, and then move on to the grill and bar. And then we'll try to get back into our chart. And at some point, we will try to get out our electromagnetic hypersensitivity video. Um, but like I said, we got new information on that, so I'm kind of glad that we didn't do it right away because we didn't have that information before, but now we do. A couple of new things so that'll be good so uh that's going to be it for now guys uh thanks for all your thumbs up thumbs down thanks for your comments leads feedback and subscriptions
And uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. And for now, you guys have a great rest of your day.